for most people out there to understand too, the brain doesn't feel pain. So, you know, when you have brain inflammation, you're not necessarily going to feel pain. Although, you know, in some cases you may have a headache if you've got a lot of swelling in there. In general, you're going to notice that your brain just isn't functioning as well or your mood may be impacted, whether it's anxiety or depression, things like that. We know that now that that is re related to inflammation in the brain. And so let's talk about some of those root cause factors. And mm -hmm. so, you know, where do you start? When somebody comes in, they're depressed, they're not sleeping well, uh, maybe they have anxiety. Where, where do you start looking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I find my job is really a detective, right? Because um, as you mentioned, a lot of people have tried a lot of things and, you know, they're already, you know, off of inflammatory foods and they've tried a lot of nutritional supplements and they've done their due diligence in so many ways. And so I'm going to start looking at the lens of things that are a little bit more outside of the box that we need to go to that level because um, they've tried things. And so, you know, my little inventory that I constantly have in my brain um, to help someone is looking for what we call um, interference fields and interference fields um, is this term that comes out of um, really uh, neural therapy and German biological uh, medicine but the they can be either scars or focal infections that impact the body's ability to self-regulate and heal so when I think about those I think about the mouth is a huge place when we think about the brain health so we look at what we would call dental interference fields so I ask people have they ever had an amalgam filling um, you know do they still have amalgam fillings so just getting them removed is just step one and kind of really removing the um, neurotoxic exposure of mercury that can uh, bioaccumulate um, for years and can affect uh, the cranial nerves and can get into the brain and the nervous system. So that can be a route so that mercury can get into the brain, creating neuroinflammation. And mercury is really insidious. It can affect us in so many um, ways. And the mouth is a really common exposure for some of my patients. Um, so uh, looking at history of the mouth, comes we also look at history of root canals. Um, root canals um, are really not healthy for anyone uh, through the work of Dr. Weston Price, you know, almost a century ago. Um, you know, he was also finding this to be the case that um, when we have dead teeth, um, just taking out uh, the root and the nerve um, and, you know, filling it with non-biocompatible material, it's not going to be a sterile tooth. It's a dead tooth. It's a, it's the only place in medicine where we leave um, dead tissue in the body and um, hope for the best. And so this can um, harbor um, bacteria, also viruses, um, fungi, even um, amoebas or parasitic infections. And when we know even, you know, of course, conventional doctors, even those who um, cardiologists, we know the um, mouth is um, in the oral microbiome has a huge effect on us systemically and affects our heart health. Um, but of course, when we think about the brain, um, this can be, again, another um, route that's um, close to the brain and it can travel, these um, infections can travel via the circulatory system, the lymphatics, they can get into the um, neurons. Um, and then we also look, you know, from the um, acupuncture perspective, you know, our teeth actually develop from the same tissue as our brain. So we have that nervous system, uh, dental connection, and then every tooth sits on an acupuncture meridian. So there are these amazing connections um, between between our mouth um, and us systemically. And so we look at that connection of, okay, where would an amalgam be placed or a root canal um, tooth be placed? And let's say it's on um, tooth number seven. And let's say someone has, um, you know, chronic bladder or kidney infection. So there can be a relationship to the infection in that front tooth that aligns with the kidney bladder meridian. And so in order to recover that organ system, we have to look at the mouth. So just a little, you know, um, side yeah. note there. Um, so we look at, you know, amalgams, we look at root canals, we look at, um, I always ask patients if they've had their wisdom teeth removed, and it's very common and often necessary. However, um, it's kind of the chicken or the egg. Some people, um, you know, either are more vulnerable during that time and they don't heal properly or because of conventional dental practices, they don't take out the uh, the ligament of the tooth um, and leave that behind. And so then that tissue doesn't get the, um, the signal um, to heal and repair. And so there can be something in the jaw called a cavitation. And this can be kind of really a hole of necrotic bone where the, the, um, the tooth was removed. Um, and so it's interesting um, 
um, you know, we have um, often patients get that addressed and removed and send that tissue into a lab such as DNA Connections, and it's wild what's in there. So there can be mm. anything from, you know, a whole host of different bacteria to viruses to entamoeba to um, candida to um, Bartonella. Um, so it can be this pocket of infection that continues to put stress on the lymphatics. Um, the circulatory system can get taken up um, into the nervous system, especially the vagus nerve. Um, the um, wisdom teeth sit on um, the uh, essentially the small intestine um, meridian, also connected to the um, the hormones in the cardiovascular system. And when we think about the vagus nerve, right, the tenth cranial nerve, it has a lot to do with those um, organ wow. systems. And so, if that you know, if there's a brewing infection, or uh, just think about it as like a a reservoir, a home base that's safe, that the immune system can't get to. This can be a um, place where um, these pathog pathogens can live and then they can create um, distress in the body. And so the mouth is a big one. I can go, you know, um, you know, into that um, other aspects as well, but the mouth can be, um, you know, addressing um, dental interference fields can be some of the most rewarding work that we do. Um, however, you really want to do this with like really well-trained um biological dentists and then either paired with either like a naturopathic doctor or a functional medicine doctor who knows how to work with biological dentists just to support your immune system. Um, it's not something that you just kind of want to do one day and kind of wander into because we want this to like lead you to health and not be mm -hmm. an aggravation for you. Um, yeah. But I, I find there's a lot in the mouth that can affect and be at the root of brain inflammation. Yeah, I mean, that's really good. A great place to start what's happening in the mouth. Now, the type of um, scan is called a cone beam, right? To kind mm -hmm. of look for the yep. cavitations and things like that. Now, are you seeing that like a bio some biological dentists read that differently or maybe specialize in reading that better than other biological dentists? Yeah, that's a great question. And so, you know, um, that um, scan, that technology is, it's still um, in its infancy in that it's still, um, you know, it's um, a great tool to help us diagnose these cavitations um, that we used to just have to go through, you know, looking at 2D scans or going through clinical mm -hmm. information. And then just, you know, there would be some great biological dentists who would just, you know, hey, it seems like this is a thing and then go in there and then find the infection. So our imaging is getting a lot better. Um, and yes, you know, unfortunately, just um, conventional dentists won't have a framework for this and they won't diagnose that. You know, a lot of great people, it's just not the right training to understand this. And then biological dentistry, I find that certain biological dentists really specialize. So they'll specialize in um, safe mercury removal, and that's great, you know, and then there's going to be some who are going to specialize in um, root canal extraction or cavitation surgery um, using different implants, especially, um, you know, avoiding titanium implants and just using zirconia. So you want to look for a dentist and, you know, they might not advertise this all on their website, unfortunately, yeah. because of the state of, you know, our health and our system, but a phone call or kind of a consult can get you down that, um, you know, build rapport and that you can get that information. But typically, um, these are biological dentists who have a language that they do zirconia implants, that they use ozone in their office, they, they use something mm. called platelet-rich fibrinogen to help um, the, basically use your own stem cells to heal the bones. So those are some key words that you're going to be looking for um, when interviewing a biological dentist, but great question. And, you know, that everyone has their specialty and their niche. And then of course, um, because of the state of medicine, everyone has to, you know, watch their license and watch, um, you know, um, you know, just walk that line of helping one person versus getting, you know, on someone's radar. So they're going to um, navigate, everyone's going to navigate that a little differently, but this is really important work. Um, I, you know, I've only been practicing 10 years and this has been definitely a through line um, that often patients come to me still with an issue in their mouth that hasn't been addressed yet. Mm.